Hey guys, what is up? Ayoki here, and today we've got something super exciting. About two years ago, I think, they announced the Riot League of Legends fighting game. They showed like literally a half second of gameplay, maybe two seconds. It looked really, really early in development, and then they basically said that like, hey, we'll be back when we have more to show, and right on the when the iron is hot with arcane the second the arcane ended uh we've got an update on project l so this got dropped in my lap let's take a look at it guys i'm hey pretty everyone. excited i'm tom executive producer hey tom and i'm tony project l's technical what's up tony last time we talked i let you in on the secret that we're building a fighting game here at riot so that's all we saw last time this this was like the play. only clip so we saw looked awesome looked amazing we'll share more when we're ready well a lot's changed since then We've made some great progress, and while the game is still too far out to commit to a release date, it's been a bit since you heard from us. So I want to bring you up to speed on what we've been working. Show on. us, buddy. Show from us. From the beginning, we knew that we give us the goods. Fighters set in the universe of Runeterra, but the 2D fighting space is pretty broad. Even from that starting point, there are a ton of different directions we could take the game. After lots of exploration, we're excited to say that we've landed on a direction that we're pretty pumped about. Okay. In this quick update will walk you through our high-level approach when it comes to core gameplay, character design, and netcode. But first, allow me to reintroduce Project L. Yes. Ooh. Okay. Wait, it looks completely different. Wait, it's got a completely different art style than the last time we saw it. It's it's like more like anime, like cell shaded almost. Last time we saw it, it was like totally 3D, like almost like realistic looking. I like this though. No, I do like this new art style, and this looks sick. I mean, that just looked like so fluid. Project L will be an assist-based fighter. You'll oh. build and pilot a team of two different. So it's teams. like a tag team game. We feel like this is the right foundation to build a game that rewards strategic team building. And I wonder if this is gonna be co-op. On top of strong fighting fundamentals. Our goal is to build a game. Also, a yo, Riot, could you introduce this guy right here? This random robot in the background, just chilling. Could could we get them as a champion in League of Legends, please? I I, I want this guy. It's like Blitzcrank's cu Blitzcrank's cousin. Paced, dynamic combat fantasy. Yeah, no, I like the I like the way this looked. The hits look like combat. really impactful. Like a I like the idea of like being able to swap in two different characters. Plays, hard reads and 200 IQ plays behind some of the most iconic moments in fighting game history. The dream for us is to deliver a game that allows you Dude, Ari's just juggling this man for many years to come. Now let's talk about controls. I know that a lot of you have strong opinions about mechanical difficulty in fighting games. For Project L, we're embracing the easy to learn, hard to master mentality. Okay, easy to learn, hard to master. Uh, like I, I feel like okay, so the the hardcore fighting game community, which I'm not really a part of, so please excuse me if I like misuse some terms here. I've played fighting games. The last fighting game I played was uh, what was it? Dragon Ball's Fighters, Fighter Z. Uh, and this it, that game kind of took the same approach. It was like super easy. Like basically, you could pick up a controller, mash A, and something cool would happen on screen. But like that wasn't the most effective way to learn it. Like it was super easy to pick up and play, but like very, very hard to, to master. And like, if you put in the time and like actually learn like inputs and like all the different characters, like combos and stuff like that, that was how you actually excelled at the game. But like you could give a controller to anyone and they could just button mash and like they, they would do serviceable, right? I feel like that's, uh, that's the exact route that Riot's gonna take. Like they're saying like easy to pick up, hard to master. So yeah, it's, it's the right way to go. That's the reason League of Legends got so popular. Character and learn their basic kit. That said, we absolutely believe in rewarding the time you spend going deep on a character, yeah. and providing opportunities for you to showcase your high-end mastery. One of the delights of fighting games Ooh. is seeing top players move and fight Ooh. in a way that's inspiring this looks so and sick. lesser skilled players. We want to set that aspirational summit and build a steadily increasing difficulty curve to get you there. This isn't about building a game where new players have a chance to beat the pros. It's about unlocking the fun at all skill levels. I like that. I dig that. Design, of course. Plays a huge role he, he, here's the thing is that there were, when this game first comes out we're gonna have millions of players coming over from league of legends and like just button mashing and if you don't like satisfy those players like if those players can't at least like pull off cool looking combos without like going into practice mode and practicing you know hit uh workshopping their characters for like 10 hours like they're just gonna quit and they'll never keep playing like you have to you have to give them a nice foundation like nice easy button mash okay, combos and then let them build upon that and like actually get good champions are known for but adapted to work in a fighting game. So, so far we've got Jinx, Ari, Darius, uh, Echo. Champs to have powerful, flexible kits that give you the freedom to play your character your way. And this is, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is how he looked in Arcane, right? As an example, I'm thrilled to yeah, introduce right? you to Echo. Yeah, right? X Arcane, interesting. for Project L. 
Echo is a punk genius. Yes. He's a brilliant inventor. Oh, he looks so good, man. Can rewind his own It'll be really cool to see how they like incorporate League of Legends kits into uh, a fighting game. Step ahead of his opponent. The centerpiece of Echo's kit is his Chrono Strike. It's a forward moving slash, but it's a pretty good poke and a combo ender. When Echo slashes with Chrono Strike, Oh my gosh, I, dude, Riot is just taking over the entertainment world, I swear to God. They've got the number one MOBA, number one Netflix show, they're gonna have the number one fighter. ...different choice, and branch into a high committal launcher. Echo works just fine as a mid-range zoner, but he really comes online when you take full advantage of the rewind ability. I really hope Leona's in this game. ...the timing of the rewind to mix up his opponent, recover for assist attacks made by his teammates. And in the right hands, rewind can also be a strong combo extender. And then there's Time Winder. Echo's Yo, sorry I'm not saying much. I'm just like, I'm Time absorbing this. This looks so cool. This looks so fun. Close. The real payoff comes when you're able to throw Time Winder from range, giving it a chance to charge up and explode into a time distortion field that slows Echo's opponents for the next few seconds of the match. We've got CC in this Both game. Of these moves, our approach is I, I love the, uh, I love the background, by the way. Like, it's like a 2D slash 3D background. It's like, if you watch this... When Echo moves towards the uh, Darius, the perspective of the background actually shifts a little bit. So it looks like it's 2D, but it's actually 3D. I think it's like 2.5D kind of in the background. But lots and lots of detail too. When you use it in the right situation. This looks so good. Now, while gameplay is obviously super important, high quality net code is essential for any great fighting game. So this is an area where we're investing big. That's good to hear. That's good to hear they're getting in front of this because that is one of the biggest complaints. Again, I'm not part of the fighting game community, but I like reading and hearing about it. Uh, like, for instance, that recent uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Smash game is, like, heavily praised. Not because it's, like, the most technical, like, technically proficient fighting game out there, but because it has god-tier netcode. You have to be able to have good netcode, strong online uh, foundations, no lag, basically. If you're, if you're matchmaking online is buggy no one will play your game and it'll die off super fast i'm going to turn it over to tony and he'll walk you through some of our networking foundations netcode has been a top of mind topic in the fgc for the past year especially since we haven't been able to gather for live events for project l we've designed our entire networking stack to deliver the same highly responsive gameplay that you'd get playing offline of course wow. this starts by using rollback networking at the yep yep rollback, rollback network does a great rollback. job of maintaining a consistent low input delay across a wide range of pings Gotta have we've it. We've also developed a new networking model that enhances the benefits of rollback with core technology developed Ooh, we've by got new Riot players. technology, we'll boys. Network traffic between players through Riot Direct, our internal network already being used to minimize latency in League of Legends and Valorant. We're also actively managing a player's connection to their opponent to ensure a consistent, fair play experience. If their connection is laggy or drops packets, their experience will suffer, but yours won't. And if someone rage quits in the middle of a match, our netcode will determine who should win and who should be penalized. We're nice! We play very seriously for Project L. It's the primary way that we play test the game internally, and we're working every day to make sure it's in top shape for the eventual release. We hope you enjoyed the sneak peek at Project L. We did! Before we go, I want to remind you that our game is still in R&D. We're happy with how core combat is shaping up, but there's still a ton of work to do. Thanks so much for your patience while we take our time to make sure that we get this right. So that's all for now. Last time we spoke, Project L went dark afterwards. But this time, we'll do our best to keep in touch when we have major news to share. Thanks a lot. I imagine we'll probably get an update in another like two or three months. Uh, the game looks much, much, much further along. Uh, and you can kind of tell like why they took a break from uh, from revealing anything because this is what the game look, looked like last time we saw it. That looks totally different. Like, literally totally different. Guys, What I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments because I can't quite make my mind up which art style I actually like better. Because I remember being really, really impressed by this art style. But this one looks pretty good, too. They're just totally, totally different. This is, like, more comic booky, almost like anime fighter, like, uh, cell shaded like we talked about earlier. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this looked incredible. This looks really, really crazy. Uh, dude, Riot Games is just actually taking over the world, man. They got the number one Netflix show. They got TFT running the show. They got the number one MOBA eSport. Wild Rift is on the rise. I mean, like, what can this company not do, man? I swear to God, we're, we're going to we're gonna be, like, going to sleep on Riot sheets soon. We're going to be drinking Riot-branded water. But, uh, guys, would love to know your thoughts on the update on Project L down in the comments. Uh, are you guys going to be playing this game? Who do you hope makes it into the roster? And all that good stuff down in the comments. Take it easy, boys and girls. Peace. Uh.